Well, hello everybody. Welcome to another Yukon Bob video. I'm starting this one off in uh, my backyard. It's uh, it's a Sunday night just sitting around the new fire bowl that I put in just a little while ago. Did a bit of a landscape job in the backyard this summer. Uh, took about four weeks to get it all done, but turned out pretty nice. Got all this walkway put in here, had this fire bowl put in here, new lawn put in all around here, and then some shrubbery and stuff like that. And then that just leads up to the house back up that way to the back deck. So I just thought I'd give you a quick look at that because uh, that's been my project here for the last uh, four weeks or so and uh, had a little party here Friday night just to break it all in and celebrate the, the new backyard and fire bowl. What we are going to be doing starting tomorrow morning is heading out on the sea -Doo. It looks like uh, we've got some really nice weather coming up in uh, southern Ontario for all of this week. It's going to be nice and calm. The winds are going to be calm and there is going to be um, lots of sunshine and temperatures around 22, 23 degrees. So it's looking pretty good for the week. Didn't get a video out last week. Hope to bang off two or maybe even three videos this week starting tomorrow. So I'll see you guys in the morning. We'll get the truck all loaded up and we'll head up to Tobermory on the Bruce Peninsula, one of my favorite trips to go on in all of Southern Ontario. I love this area. And uh, I'm gonna be joined by a couple of guys from the sea -Doo Tours Riding Group. So we'll see you guys in the morning. Well, it is now morning time. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Yukon Bob channel. Just uh, getting the gear together here this morning, loading up. I uh, have had the sea -Doo ready for a couple of days. Going to be a, a two-day trip today. I'm going to go out and uh, explore the waters of uh, Tobermory. And uh, I'm, because it's so far away, it's about three and a half hours from where I live to get up to where we're going to launch from today. It's going to be a two-day trip. I'm going to spend one night in a motel room up in the area. And then I'm going to uh, do a second trip the following day because the weather conditions for a trip like this you want to have it right since you're driving so far away to have them right for a couple of days and it looks like we've got uh, good weather for the next several days so this is the first of a two-day trip and uh, gonna get everything loaded up grab myself a coffee at Tim Hortons and hit the road three and a half hours later I'll be up there at uh, a place called Dyer's Bay on the way to Tobermory on the Bruce Peninsula. So everything pretty much hooked up. It's been ready to go. We'll just uh, load up the vehicle and we will uh, be out of here. Alrighty, so I'm just uh, about to, to pull into Dyer's Bay and I just want to let you know that there is a parking thing here that you have to pay. The last time I was here, this thing wasn't working properly, but it looks like it is working now. So it's kind of pricey here. It's five bucks per hour and a maximum of $30. So I'm going to be out for more than six hours. So it's going to cost me $30 to park here and you pay on the road in like I'm just not I'm not even near the water yet but you pay and then you have to put this ticket on your dash and it says failure to purchase display a valid parking ticket will result in your vehicle being tagged and or towed so I don't know that's kind of pricey and it's kind of ridiculous out in the middle of nowhere just to park your vehicle but I guess it is what it is so I've got the ticket and I'll put that on the dash and I'll go down to the water now and put the sea in the water and wait for the other guys who should be here shortly. Okay, I have arrived at the water and uh, gee, it looks pretty good. Looks nice and calm out here, which is exactly what we wanted. This is a pretty steep ramp, if I remember right. Yeah, it's a good ramp. It's all solid concrete and everything, but it's fairly steep to get down into the water. And then you've got a bit of a climb. There's some ladders over there to climb back out. So I'm gonna get everything ready. I'm the first guy here. The other guys are a little bit behind me. I had a phone call on the way up here. So I know that uh, Greg is about 15, 20 minutes behind me. Every time I've done this route in the past, I've always done it solo. I haven't uh, ever traveled with anybody else doing this route. So it is kind of nice and a little bit reassuring doing this trip with somebody else because this trip is one of those where it's a little bit isolated out there and there's not a lot of places to plane coming by, not a lot of places to get off the water. It's pretty much a rocky coastline all the way along. There's only one spot where there's a safe haven to kind of get off. So it's kind of nice knowing that you're traveling with a couple of other sea dudes to know that if anything happens, you've got some help. All right, I'm going to get everything unhooked here, get the straps undone, and get the tarp off, get ready to put it in the water. Okay, so Greg is showing up now. That is two of us. There's going to be three today, myself, Greg, and Phil, who's coming in from Sarnia. And oddly enough, Greg, <laughs> uh, you hear first. because Phil drives so far to get to our Sea-Doo trips, he usually has about a four to five hour trip just to get to where we are. 
I think today he might be a little bit shorter than us or the same time anyway. So Phil will be happy. The last time I texted him yesterday, he said, at least I don't have to get up at 4.30 in the morning to join you guys. I can leave at seven, a reasonable hour. So Phil should be here shortly. Water looks good. Is it? Yeah, it looks pretty calm, a little, little rolly, but uh, oh, nice. that's nice. Yeah, this is not really made for sea dews because you got, well, there is this ladder so you can kind of climb out. We just sort of tied it temporarily there. I didn't go all the way in because I didn't want to get the vehicle too far down in. I just kind of pushed the sea dew off the end of the trailer. It wasn't really even in the water yet, but just to be careful that I didn't get stuck there. Okay. <sighs> Thank God there's a ladder. But look how clear the water is here. This green color. Just beautiful. And that's going to get only better on the way up. All right. After 35, 40 minutes, <laughs> I think we've got three machines in the water. Phil's also showed up now. So he's got his machine in the water and he's gone to the parking lot at the top of the hill will be back in a minute or two so I guess we climb down I don't even know how to get on my machine now because Phil's by the ladder so I don't know how to get on this thing that's a long drop I may I may have to wait for Phil to come because that's too big a jump I did that once a little while ago when I was in France and Paris and I'm still suffering with a sprained ankle from a month ago it's still sore in the ankle jumped off a five-foot platform and it's taken a long time to heal okay so there's the ladder right there Phil can climb down move his machine then I can get mine out just a little bit of pollen on the surface of the water all this yellow stuff is a bit of pollen other than that the water is just crystal clear here yeah it's unfortunate about the pollen right now but that will clear up later on as summer goes on just a bit of it on the surface of the water right now but Later on, it'll dissipate towards, towards the middle of summer. So we're just waiting for Phil. He's up parking his truck. Once he gets back, we'll be ready to get underway. Okay, so I think we got all the navigation systems hooked up. I'm going to be using Navionics off the, uh, the iPhone, which is wired into the USB power source on the Sea-Doo. And then up on the Garmin, I've got that set up as well. I've reset all of the uh, instrumentation so we can get a you know an accurate track of distance and fuel consumption and all of that sort of stuff today so that's all set so that's set that's set i think we're all pretty much just about ready to go there's phil on the water greg's over there So those cliffs up there is uh, uh, what the Bruce Peninsula is sort of known for. It's this escarpment that runs all the way from Niagara Falls at the Canada-US border, and then it runs all the way up along the coastline, the Bruce Peninsula, all the way up to Tobermory. And this is uh, one of those really unique places in the world. It's designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Biosphere site, something like that, which basically means it's pretty unique stuff. And that's all limestone stuff. This was created by glaciation some 40 million years ago. And uh, these cliffs just run all the way along the shoreline up to Tobermory. Sometimes a little higher, sometimes a little lower. Sometimes there's caves and stuff like that you can kind of pull into. It's just a really neat kind of cool area. And as we get up a little further up here, this is called uh, Cabot Head. Up at the point, Cabot Head. And then we start turning back a little bit towards uh, towards the east, 
No, the west. But you can see what I mean about the gravel, right? There's really no place to get off the water here because it's gravel all the way along the shoreline, pretty much all the way from here to Tobermory. There's very few sand beaches. There's only one little area, and then the rest is all kind of uh, all this gravel. So there's the lighthouse I was talking about, right on the point here at uh, Cabot Head. And then just up around the corner over there is probably the only spot on this entire coastline where you can actually get off the water if it got really rough and take refuge. There's a basin in there called the Wingfield Basin. And we're gonna go in there and have a look. There's a sunken ship that's in there. I've showed this in some past videos when I've been up there, been up this way, but it's really always kind of neat to go in there and have a look around. So. Right off of Cabot Head, which is where the lighthouse is there, the automated lighthouse now, the tower on the right. And then just up here, around the corner, is uh, Wingfield Basin. So this is the uh, Gargantuan. It was a, uh, a freighter that was loaded with lumber. I think it was in the 1950s. It got caught in rough water out on Georgian Bay and started taking on some water. So it pulled into here in order to take refuge, but then it started leaking. They came back the next year to try and uh, salvage it, but it had sunk to the bottom. And then later on in the 1970s, there was a fire and it burnt the whole top part of the ship. So this is all that's now left of the, uh, the Gargantuan sitting here in Wingfield Basin. It's really kind of neat, just this relic right here. Come around the, the stern. And if I remember correctly, just up here on the side of it, there's actually a beaver dam that's in place. Yeah, the beaver dam is just up, just up in front of me here. It's down off the side of the, the bow of the ship. Maybe you can see it. Right down there. That's the beaver dam. I've often seen a bunch of little fish swimming around inside this thing. This might be a good place to put the drone in the air and get a couple of aerials. So if you were to head straight across this body of water of Georgian Bay, all the way out there, it's about 85 kilometers across Georgian Bay to get over to the other side. And basically across from here, roughly, would be uh, Perry Sound on the other side. So it's a big body of water out there. This could be some of the the highest elevations of the escarpment all the way along here. I don't think I've seen anything higher than that all the way up to Tobermore. I think this is about uh, the highest it gets. If you look way up there, it's almost like a cave up in there, like a indentation into the rock. There's probably a lot of 
birds that nest up in that area. The last time I was here, I flew the drone up there and flew it along the top of that ridge, but don't think I'll do that today. But look at the color of the water. And then the rocks just kind of poking out a little bit here and there. So beautiful in here. It looks like that big boulder there probably slid off from somewhere up high and landed right down there. Huge. Look at these slabs of rock here. Wow. I think Greg said the temperature of the water was about 64, 65 degrees. So you wouldn't want to wind up in this water. It's still, it's still pretty cold. This water doesn't really warm up a hell of a lot, even in the middle of the summer. It'll get a little warmer and some of the shallow areas will warm up, but basically the water in Georgian Bay is fairly cold. Would you crawl underneath that rock? Just this rock on the outside edge is holding that whole massive structure up. It's probably been like that for thousands of years. Look at these little bays you can pull back into here. Might be tough to get into that one, but... If I'm not mistaken, the last time I was here, the water was higher and I actually went right around that rock, this big rock right here. I was able to get right around it. Water seems to be a little bit lower right now. I don't think I can get around there. No, I definitely can't get around there. Unless it's a different rock. Maybe it was up here a bit. Nah, this is the rock I went around before, right up here, this one. See if I could still do it. Ah! <laughs> Just enough water to get around there. And then those trees just hanging on to the rock up there, growing on the rock, sort of in the cave a bit. Yikes. I don't think I can get out there. Can I get out here? Nope. Oh, little touch. <laughs> I probably could have got out around that side. The last time I was here, it was just like glass when I came through here. So it was a lot easier to maneuver. A little bit, uh, little bit of wind action this time. Oh yeah, so spectacular though. One of the best sea dew trips in Ontario was this trip along the Bruce Peninsula and it's always weather dependent. I've seen people on the internet, uh, some of these sea dew forums saying, 
Let's get together June 28th or some particular date. Let's all meet up and do the Bruce Peninsula. You can't plan a trip along the Bruce Peninsula like that because it's all weather dependent. You have to have the right weather. And even today when the forecast called for very light winds, it's still a little bit choppy out here. Just the wave action itself on uh, Georgian Bay is making it a little bit, uh, a little bit rough on the water. spectacular though particularly with the color of the water wow here it's deeper I can get right in beside the wall there's a really good look at it right in beside the wall want to hit that rock That's a big cave back in there. That's probably the biggest cave. And look at this chunk of rock. It just slid off that face many, many years ago. Okay, here's the cave I was telling you guys about that you can pull right into. You can go right up into this cave. It's a little bit windy today. I'm gonna go up and show, show you, but you gotta be a little bit careful. Okay, I'm in the cave now. And I'm trying to do this while I'm filming. And it's not the easiest thing to do while you're filming. So that's the cave. And then right around the corner from the cave is the grotto. This is probably the number one attraction in the Tobermory area. This is uh, the grotto. This is such a busy tourist attraction that in the summertime they limit the number of people that can actually come into the grotto, you have to make a reservation uh, and for parking and then you get so much time in here. <laughs> oh jeez. How's the water? A little cold. Yeah, I'll bet it is. It's about 64 degrees. <laughs> so this is a, a pretty busy place in the summer months. There's a lot of people come in here and just uh, hang out around the grotto. It's a great swimming hole. The actual grotto is just around the corner over here, but this area here is where you can walk in from the road, from the parking lot, and then you can just uh, kind of come in here, hang along the shoreline in here, and enjoy the waters here. And in the middle of the summer, in July and August, there's all kinds of people in the water here. People will be jumping off those cliffs. These cliffs up over here, people will be jumping off those cliffs and into the water. So. You know, it's a, a big attraction for the Tobermory area. It's a big tourism attraction here. And then they've got cruise boats that come in out of uh, Tobermory itself, which is just down that way down there. Those cruise boats will run up here and bring people here from Tobermory for sort of a day outing. But yeah, popular, popular spot. Jeez, is that, is that it? That's it right there, eh? Yeah. So I've been in here when the water's been high enough that I could drive the Sea-Doo right into that cave. 
because what you can do is you can get in that cave there and then you can swim underwater and come up and come on the outside of the cave. So the grotto part is right back in there, but the water right now is a lot lower because I have in the past been able to drive right over that rock ledge and pull right in there. So this is the entrance to uh, Big Tug Harbor. Big Tug Harbor is the largest freshwater port in Canada. It's the deepest, it goes back the furthest. So this is the entrance to it right here. Tobermory, just around the point over there, past that ferry ship over there. And then right up here is Big Tub Harbor. And in Big Tub Harbor, right down at the end of it, there's a shipwreck. You can drive right over top of the shipwreck as long as there's not people snorkeling or diving on the shipwreck, you can go right over top of it. Because the waters are so clear, you can see right down into the water at it. This is the uh, bit of a Coast Guard base that they've got here. And they keep a couple of vessels right in here. Keeping it all nice and clean. I hope I never have to call those guys to come and get me. But it's nice to know that they are out on this lake if you need them. There it is. We're over top of it now. It's a little hard to make out when there's some ripple action on the water, but this is it right below us. So this would be the stern of the boat back here. And then the bow, I'll go right down the middle of the boat. There's one of the holes. Not sure how well this is going to turn out on film or videotape or MP3, whatever it is. <laughs> so I just got lucky and managed to catch it before it takes off. That's the Chichimon ferry. It's a passenger car ferry and it runs between Tobermory and uh, Baymouth Harbor over on Manitoulin Island. I think the front part of that is still just starting to come down where they load the vehicles off and on from. And it runs, I think, in the summertime like three times a day. It's about a two hour trip to get across over to uh, Manitoulin Island. And it's a beautiful trip. I've been on there a couple of times. And you can load your you know, car on there or you can just take the ferry across, whatever, whatever you want to do. Forget what the cost of it is, but beautiful colors on it. The Chichimon has been running uh, out of Tobermory for a lot of years over to Manitoulin Island. It's a beautiful ride. That, by the way, is the fuel dock, right when you come into uh, Little Tub Harbor here at Tobamori. If you need fuel, you can get it right at the entrance to the harbor. Nice little restaurant over there. I've had lunch over there once before, but I think we're going to go further back into, back into the harbor. As I said, this is a busy place in the summer months. Lots of little cruise boats out of here, and then people with their own private boats out of here. Should be okay. Okay, that should be okay there. The other guys are just coming in. And there's a lunch spot right up on there. And there's a balcony up there. We're from here. Oh, okay. Where are you guys from? We're from Rochester, New York. Oh, so, you're really visiting. Yeah. Alrighty, so that is uh, lunch in Tobermory. Just uh, a quick hamburger and some fries. Uh, not actually all that good. It was at a place called the Crow's Nest, which is uh, overlooking the water here, but the food was not that great. So anyway, that's what it is and that's what it was. And we're gonna push off here now. Gonna make our way now if we can, if the weather is not too rough out there, if the wave action isn't too big, the plan now is to head over to Flower Pot Island. And uh, I'll tell you why it's called Flower Pot Island when we get over there. So that right there is why they call the place Flower Pot Island. Those things are supposed to look like 
flower pot stands, I guess. There's two of them now. There used to be at one point three of them here, but uh, one fell down a number of years ago. I think they've done a bit of cementing along the base of these ones to make sure that they stay up a little longer, but that's where it gets its name from, right there, Flower Pot Island. And they run people out here in these boats and then they walk along the shoreline and spend uh, an afternoon out here. See what I mean? This one's a little bit more majestic, especially with the seagulls on the top. And that's how the island gets its name, Flower Pot Island. I don't know where the third one was, whether it was further down or, or what, but it's even a tree trying to grow out of there. <laughs> Just all those little rocks that hold it in place. Well guys, I think that's gonna do it for another Yukon Bob video, this time out on the waters of Georgian Bay and the uh, the Bruce Peninsula. And I'm gonna wind it up here over at Flower Pot Island, just off uh, the shores of Tobermory out in Georgian Bay. A little bit rougher than we thought today. It's looking like it might be calming down a little bit for the ride home, but I'm not gonna do any filming on the ride home. We're just gonna make it a quick ride back. Thanks for coming along on this Yukon Bob video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed some of these beautiful waters here along uh, the Tobermory Bruce Peninsula coastline. It's one of my favorite rides, uh, and I'm glad I got out to do it early this year. Maybe I'll even get out one more time, who knows? But. We'll have another video coming up for you shortly, probably from this area as well, because I'm gonna spend the night in a motel tonight and then go for another ride tomorrow, that video coming out about a week after this one. So we'll be back in the area somewhere. Till then, take care everybody, stay safe on the water, and we'll see you on the next Yukon Bob video. Bye for now.